Welcome to the start of our brand new series on Salesforce mock interviews. In this playlist, we are bringing you realistic in-depth interview simulations that mimic this actual Salesforce job interview experience. Our goal is to help you prepare thoroughly and confidently for your Salesforce job interviews. We'll cover a wide range of questions and scenarios providing you with valuable insights and tips to ace your interviews. Whether you are a fresher or an experienced professional, this series is designed to boost your confidence and readiness. So if you're serious about that Salesforce job, make sure to like this video and subscribe to Salesforce Hulk channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated with the latest videos in this series. Let's get you interview ready. Hey Tushar, how are Hi. you? Hello, like uh, I'm good. Okay, so are you prepared for the interview? Yes, I am. Great. So let's start it and I want you to provide me a brief introduction. Okay. So yeah, like uh, I had uh, done multiple internship in Salesforce domain as a Salesforce admin. Uh, majorly I had worked in the admin part, like I had worked on flows and like process automation, approval process. I had also created data models, reviewed, like seen various data models of different, different projects, done trail ad as well. So I had inter three months of inter internship experience as well as I am having like, uh, I had done lots of things over trail ad as well. And also I have learned from various uh, other sources. Okay. So since you have done internship, do you have any certifications? Yes, I had like, uh, I am having Salesforce admin certification. Okay, nice. Uh, so it's great that you have a certification. So if you don't mind, let's switch, uh, let's jump to the questions. Okay. The first question I would ask is, what do you understand about data model? A data model is simply a data structure, like uh, which uh, defines the tables and the fields. Yeah, that's, that's a data structure is like a data model is which also includes validations, lookup filters, relationship between various tables, that's all. Okay, since you added relationships, how many type of relationships do we have in Salesforce? Like if I classify relationships, there are three types of relationships. One to many, uh, one to one and many to many. So which all we can create in Salesforce? Like we can create a uh, one to many as well as many to many as well as one on one by using some customizations. Okay, great. So that's great that we can do all these, but how do we achieve one to many? Like simply uh, we need to create, a, if we want to relate two tables or two objects, uh, then we need to create a relationship in one of them, which is the many side basically. Which relationship would you create? Uh, like it depends on the requirement. If there is a dependency, like security related dependency between these two objects or there is a roll up summary required, then definitely I'll go for master detail. Otherwise I'll go for lookup. So is it required to create a master detail relationship always when we want to create a role of summary? Uh, come again, what do you say? Okay. The question is that, is it required to create master detail relationship always when you want to create a role of summary? Yes, like uh, it's not necessary, but like, let's say there are two objects on which there are already two master detail created, then definitely I cannot create a third ma master detail relationship field on it. So in that case, I'll be achieving the role of summary kind of functionality by using flows or triggers uh, and like I'll be creating lookup relationship. I have to create that. Okay, so you will create a lookup relationship then use flows, right? Yeah. Yeah. Actually. Okay. Great. So since you added uh, flows, which type of flow would you create? Like I'll be creating record triggered flow. Okay. So you will be creating a record triggered flow and what all type of flows do we have? Like we have five. There are many other templates which exist in flows, but the core, if I'll talk about, there are five. Uh, yeah. Okay. So can you name them? Yes, of course. Like, uh, there is a screen flow, record triggered flow, uh, like record flow, record triggered flow comes under auto launch one. So auto launch is further classified into record triggered flow, scheduled event flow, platform event flow. And also there is a newly added flow. It's not that newly added, but it's, it's something which is, which came latest, uh, which is orchestration flow. Okay. Nice. So since I think that you have knowledge about, uh, triggers and all as well, right? Do you a have little to? bit. I haven't done much on okay. like practical part on that, but yeah, okay, I have no problem. So do you know what difference is between a flow and a trigger? When to use which? Uh, yeah, I have to observe one thing. 
लाइक इन फ्लोज इफ यू सी रिकॉर्ड ट्रिगर फ्लोज आर देयर राइट विच इज विच कम्स एज एन ऑल्टरनेटिव टू ट्रिगर्स विच आर कोड रिलेटेड थिंग सो इन रिकॉर्ड ट्रिगर फ्लो यू विल बी ऑब्जर्विंग दैट देर इज अ क्रिएट इवेंट देर इज अ क्रिएट और अपडेट इवेंट देर इज अ डिलीट इवेंट बट देर इज नो अनडिलीट इवेंट विच इज देयर इन द्लो ट्रिगर ओके सो दैट वुड बी वन एनीथिंग एल्स and it think else uh, like a uh, yeah obviously like in triggers when it comes to complex functionalities we can use map to optimize the code to reduce the time complexity of that but when it comes to the admin part the flows part there is no map kind of functionality in flows so th that optimization related things cannot be achieved there you have to use for loop in inside a loop so that is something which i find like in coding and flows like the difference okay great so let's move to the next thing uh, i would ask you questions regarding data security okay can you tell me what's the difference between a profile and a role so a profile is having set of permissions like app permission page layout object level security field level security login access time login hours basically so these are the things which are there in profile but uh like if i'll talk about roles it's simply added in salesforce for the purpose to give additional access to the managers of the subordinates okay uh anything else you want to add yeah that's that's i think uh, that is the major difference that's a major difference okay so when do we create which when do we need to create a role or when do we need to create a profile we always need a profile and like a role is also necessary in some situations like uh, when we need some additional access like profile is something which is which gives the minimum access to a user in the organization and as i specified already that role is something which give additional access to the managers to the people who, who are in higher hierarchy role provider higher access does it in terms of object level access or in terms of field level or in terms of record level i'm talking about when i'm talking about roles i'm talking about record level security okay so it provides ex more access to the records yes absolutely okay great so if we want to provide access higher access with the help of roles can we do that of the object uh like let's say uh, if i'll think of an example for this to explain you so like there is a user right and uh, there is a manager of that particular person so at like a profile level they have create an added access right both of them have create an added access now uh, like in the owd it is set to private so both of them can see their own records only right both the users the user uh, uh, which is a normal employee and the the person who there is a person who is above the hierarchy like he is the manager of that user so if the role ar key is enabled then in that case the above the manager will be able to access his own records as well as the subordinates records and the subordinate will only able to access his own records okay that's great uh, since you know the difference uh, or whatever we will be creating for as in considering a a role okay now let's move to the next question to whom okay uh, i have a better question what what is a um, mutable permission set what is a mutable permission set uh, actually i don't know about that but uh, i know permission set if you want i can explain that yeah let's let's go with that so in permission set we can give additional access more than a profile and there there in that the uh, the like uh, we can give more access to the profile and also we can set the expiration like we can set a duration a particular duration till which the access will be there the additional access will be there to set of users okay so this scenario st uh, states that we have a organization which is having a sales using salesforce and it already have around 500 users which are using it there is a certain requirement that is there is a user which can see a record of account object or you can say any object whichever you want to consider it now what we want is that we shouldn't we we cannot as there is multiple users already present we don't we don't want to provide any profile level security or any we don't want to create any profile as well we can't do any owd because as we have already have multiple users but still we want that the particular particular user should not see the 
records of that particular object or you can say the subset of those records he should he should see certain records but not all the records what do you think we should do like for uh, uh like owd owd we can make private and then we can create sharing rule yeah but that that's the thing which we don't want to do because once we do that we need to change the set all the complete sharing settings and all the things again for our organization why why can because we, we already have it public read right so if we change it to private all the user will not able to see anything right so we need to establish every single thing from the base that's the problem that's why we just have only one user should not see a particular set of records in a particular object in that case uh, like i am get uh, i am able to think of one solution which i haven't like not tried much which is restricted rules or scoping rules which we can use there in data security okay which one you would use scoping I think rules or restriction no, rules no no restriction rules i think maybe i'm not very really sure about it. Okay so do you know what restriction rules no not much but i had heard about it okay okay great uh, since you don't know what restriction rule let's that's not a problem uh, let's move to the next question okay what's the difference between public group and a queue they are totally different things like a public group can consist of users roles roles and subordinates it's a group of multiple things like this queues is simply a functionality which allows someone to take the responsibility of a particular case or a lead something like this okay where do we see the queues like we have to go into the setup in the quick find box we need to write down the queue and there we can create a queue and if we want to like uh, see the queues uh, like the cre already created queues then obviously you have to go to the record page you can change the owner and there you will be finding one more option queue if you have created the queue for that particular object anywhere else you think no i am not getting like uh, right now any other okay uh have you heard about list views list views yes yes so don't you think we will see the queues there as well yeah uh, i think yeah the list view also get created when we create a queue for a particular option okay can we have a single queue for multiple objects uh no i, I actually i am not sure about it but i feel no okay uh just check about it uh, i think it we can create a single queue for multiple objects maybe yeah okay, okay. so let's move to the next question so let's uh, since you know about sales cloud right so i'll ask you this questions regarding that the first question i want to ask uh, do you know about opportunity line item yes what's it what's an object what's the use of that object uh as you can see like uh, its name is opportunity line item it represents a junction object between op opportunity and product are you sure it's a junction object it's a yeah like uh, it's a common object between opportunity and product uh what do you meant by common object like uh, there is a relationship of uh, opportunity relationship field of opportunity on this object as well as the product relationship field is also there okay okay so you meant right reference object right something like reference object R uh i didn't get you can you see beat you meant the common object like a reference object right yeah okay so okay uh, do you know what is campaign member oh uh, yes i know okay so what's the relationship between campaign members and all the objects like campaign member is a tri junction object which is uh, related to lead contact and campaign but maybe it is also related to if i am able to remember recall that uh, it is also related to opportunity we need to enable something in the quick find box okay uh, i think you meant account object right no i am actually not sure i am sure about lead contact and uh, campaign itself that's that okay. that is something i am sure about okay what is a standard price book a standard price book is a price book which is already present in the org anything else what is the use of it why it's already present uh okay so because let let's let's understand that if we want to add a product to a opportunity then in that case there is there is a need of a price book without a price without adding a price book we cannot add a product to a opportunity the reason being that the price book defines the price of the 
product if price book will not be there then obviously from where we will be taking the price of the product or so can there be multiple price of a single product yes there can be but of uh, like of course while adding it to a opportunity we have to choose one of the price one of the price how do we do that exactly like uh, if you like uh, like i am trying to recall that like if i'll go to the record page of opportunity from there we add the product and while adding the product the, the we get two options first option is add a product second option is choose a price book so so that's that's where from like uh, we can add a product or we can choose a price book to select a particular price okay great uh, that's right and so let's take this interview to an end do you have any questions for me Yes, uh, of course. Like I, I want to ask for the feedback. Like it's good or no, uh, Tushar. I think that it was great. But uh, you have a basic knowledge of the foundation of Salesforce. You need to have more knowledge since you already told that you don't have uh, development knowledge much. So that was the feedback. You should focus on that as well. Thank you. <laughs>